Hey guys, it's Joel. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my Porsche Cayenne, which I know many of you have been asking about and wondering about if I still own this car and how I've been getting on with it. Now, it has been almost a year since I first bought this and well, it's not gone exactly as I expected, let's put it that way. And today I've brought it back down to ePorsche as it's due a full service and we're gonna be doing that. Uh, but also I think it'd be a good opportunity after such a long time and many, many miles behind the wheel of this thing to do a little bit of an overview of everything that's gone into keeping this thing going. But stay tuned if you're interested to see what it really has been like to run a Porsche Cayenne over the last year. So initially when I bought this car, I wasn't actually looking for a V6. I probably would have preferred the V8, but this one just came up at such a good price. It had the lovely 20 inch wheels on at the time, which I really liked. And everything just seemed fine with it when I went to drive it. It was great. And I just decided I've been looking for a KN long enough. I should just buy this one. And as I say, I then brought it here. I was surprised when Chris gave it its appraisal and told me that basically there was nothing to worry about. There was some stuff that was slowly starting to perish, such as the big subframe bushes. And uh, we'll look at them again today to see how they progress. But nothing that was really desperately needing doing. As the months went on then, there was a few issues that came up. I had an engine light that came on. I also noticed a large rattle and then a very noisy exhaust, which turned out to be where the catalytic converter had split away from uh, the rest of the pipe. And so we had that repaired along with a few other bits, which we'll go through in a minute. I've got all the receipts. Anyway, today we are doing a major service on the car, having the spark plugs done, oil change, filters, and uh, whatever else comes with that, I'll have to check. But let's get Chris back on camera now, have a little look at the car a year on from when we first brought it here and see how this KN is doing. Because in my head, it's been a really reliable and perfect daily driver. Hello, so Joel's back a year later. We're just uh, him for a service, major service, spark plug replacement. And we're gonna uh, have a look around and see, uh, see how she's looking. Okay, so we're starting at the front. So Joel has uh, changed his wheels since he was last here. Yeah. You've got some uh, smaller wheels with some winter tires. Probably quite a clever idea for this time of year. Brakes, let's see. Should we see how heavy you've been on the brakes? Oh, they're all right. Not like half worn. This all right. So under here, it all looks um, pretty good, pretty standard. A bit of corrosion on the wheel, but you probably know that. I remember last time, these subframe bushes have got slightly worse than that one. The exhaust repair's holding up though, so that's pretty good. It's all looking okay. To be honest, there's not really a lot on these KNs that seem to fail. Uh, prop sharp, these like to... It's all right, for 130,000, that's all right. But when they go, you know about it because when you accelerate or put it under load, it goes dum, 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 right. from the middle. And will yeah. it just sort of go it's all of a sudden one day? You'll, it will, you'll feel it before it, you know, you'll, you'll get a... The juddering under load. Yeah, so basically. Worse worse. Yeah. yeah, it's more of a noise. And when they're really bad, you, you heavy accelerate. It's normally on the turbos, yes. really, because they're obviously more, more power. They, they really, Eat. sounds like someone's banging on the bottom of the floor. But a bit of corrosion on the fuel tank straps, but it's quite common. We've replaced a few of these um, over the last year, actually. They're not actually that expensive and they're still available from Porsche. I mean, it's all just well keeping with the age, really. Some of the bushes and the corrosion is, is for, but it's only real surface corrosion. So nothing I would be too concerned about, really. It's also in good condition. Mm. It all looks all right, to be fair. Just those subframe bushes is the thing I would, if you're re being really sort of anal about things, is what I would say. But it's not a complete mm -hmm. necessary to do those now. No. No. Which is quite no. good because I mean, we said the same for the thing about 10,000 miles ago and, and yeah. a year because that's what I've done in it since we had it serviced last year. Yeah. So I'm quite happy with that really. Yeah. She's doing all right. So She's today doing we're right. doing full set or ma is it a major? Ma major, yeah. Major, so, so that's. Oil and filter, cabin filter, engine air filter, and a set of spark plugs. Right, okay. A look see under the bonnet, which do you remember when we took this off last time? Yes. It was quite dry, wasn't it? Yes. Well, it's still quite dry. Yeah, no, no. No. A little weak around the cam cover, but. Okay. Is that new? Wouldn't do you worry think? about that. Nah. Just age related, you know. It's looking good. Brake breather, brake booster pipe is still uh, oh, yeah, we did that as well. in one piece. Yeah, but she's all um, looking good. The only thing 
just with all these cars and 911s and everything, the headlights are starting to, I mean, you can do the old uh, sand it back and polish it. And I mean, we do that in house here. Um, we normally sand them back, polish them, and then we put a clear coat lacquer over the top to protect them from UV. But, but yeah, other than that, I mean, she's looking pretty good. So we're leaving e-Porsche then about 500 quid lighter, but it's probably time I address the title of this video, which is about the truth about my Porsche KN. Now the reason it's called that is because if you go online and search, should I buy a 955 Porsche KN or is a 955 Porsche KN reliable? You'll find endless forums, endless videos, endless posts of people discussing and talking about how ruinously expensive these cars are to run. A lot of the echo chamber issues in fairness are to do more so with the V8 cars than my V6 such as with the coolant pipes that are plastic and need upgrading to metal, various turbo issues as well, air suspension, things like that which my car doesn't have. But you will just find in general that these 955 KNs are quote-unquote unreliable. But for me that simply hasn't been the case. It's certainly not been true. Going back about a year to when I bought this car, the reason I purchased a 955KN is because I wanted a fun daily. I'd always liked these things since they came out, but in truth, I feel like over recent years, they've just been aging a little bit better. And realistically, they come down to a price point now, which made them seem like a really good idea. But I did buy this car fully expecting it not to stay for very long because I was anticipating an array of issues similar to some of the experiences I've had with my previous Range Rovers where you sort of get in the car and you don't really know what's going to pop up this time. But life with this KN over the last year and about 12,000 miles has been anything but that. It has been completely dependable and it's actually the car that I will get in when I know that I really need to get somewhere. The same can't be said of course for my Maserati but that is no surprise. So with regards to all of the naysayers with 955 KNs, either they have gotten unlucky, maybe they have got a turbo which I'm sure I've not experienced is probably worse to run than this or perhaps they just haven't owned one and they find it too easy to get involved as a sheep with what everyone else is saying online because yeah I've just found this thing to be incredibly dependable and just a sensational all-round daily driver considering what I paid for it. So this has been incredibly reliable this K and essentially nothing has failed, nothing has gone wrong with my year with the car but it has been a relatively expensive in some ways daily driver to own and if you want to know more about that when it comes to fuel costs, general running costs, insurance, tax, there's a video I made about six months ago with all of those costs included so click in the top left hand side of the screen now if you want to see that but I'll very quickly go over some of the servicing costs including today that I've had to spend on this car. So about a year ago when I first picked up the car I did an oil service. I like to do that really with anything that I buy. It's very minimal cost for something that can cause you a lot of savings in the future. Now my oil and filter service initially was about £350 which was great for peace of mind to just get that done. I then came back a little bit later on, probably three months in, to get some preventative work done. I did a gearbox service which really didn't need doing because it had been done about four years before. I changed some of the belts, I think the alternator pulley and there was a few other bits and bobs and all of that work came to around £1,200 but it didn't really all need doing. It would have needed doing at some point but probably not three months into my ownership experience but for me that just bought peace of mind and again I planned on using this car every day and I wanted that peace of mind and then the service I've just had done today the major was just under £550 see that spark plugs all the oil and filters again and now I don't have service light on my dash and I know that this car is good for at least another year or 12,000 miles. There's been a few other bits and bobs during the year. There was an airbag light that came on which the guys at ePorsche kindly just reset for me free of charge. And I also had a aircon regas and an MOT done which was about 140 quid, which it passed with no advisories, which is great. So if you add that all up, it's just a little bit over 2,000 pounds that I've spent over the year 
on servicing and maintenance, which sounds quite a lot when you consider this car cost me just under £4,000. So all in, we're around five and a half grand into this car. But it is a car that I own outright and is probably not going to cost me anything more for the next year, apart from fuel and tax and insurance and all that sort of stuff, which as I mentioned, I talked about in another video separately because it is an expensive car to run when it comes to fuel economy or lack thereof. So is it true that these 955 Porsche Cayennes are unreliable? Well, I would say no. Certainly in my case, it's been anything but that. It's probably been one of the most reliable cars that I've ever owned. Is it true that they can be ruinously expensive to run, to maintain? Well, I've not found that to be the case, but I suppose I've not had any nasty surprises. But then at the same time, I have a pretty basic car with no air suspension. It's a pretty well-renowned engine, the VR6 3.2 litre block. It's pretty reliable. But I think I've also looked after it. I have good mechanical sympathy. And like I say, I've got things done preventatively as opposed to waiting for them to go wrong. So I do feel like these online echo chambers that tell you not to buy Range Rovers, tell you not to buy Porsche Cayennes or maybe Maserati Quattroportes, there's going to be some truth in that always. There's going to be people who truly have had really bad and perhaps unfortunate experiences with those cars. But I have found from my own experience over 10 years now of buying and running interesting cars to say the least, that actually if you keep on top of maintenance and you go into these experiences eyes wide open and potentially even buying a car like this, just expect it to cost a little bit more than a Ford Fiesta then really you're not going to have any issues or nasty surprises. So what's next for this KN then? Well, two things. Number one, I really want to take this car off-roading. It's got the winter tyres on. We've got some fun stuff down here with diff lock and low range gearbox, which I want to try out for proper off-road use. So I'm going to be looking for some green lanes around me where I can really stretch this car's legs out, especially as we're now coming into the winter months. And on that, it seems like a really good car to keep for the winter as it's a four x four, I'm on winter tires and it's been extremely reliable. But I am finding myself wanting a change for my daily driver. Whether I go for another SUV, I mean, honestly, it's probably gonna be a Range Rover if I do that. Or I go for maybe an estate car, a saloon, maybe an Audi, something with the Quattro all wheel drive system, but I'm not sure. I'll be honest with you, I am looking at Range Rovers. I'm looking at the 4.4 TDV8 L322s. I just think I need to scratch that itch. Comment below where you think I should I stick or twist. Should I keep this KN as my daily driver for the winter or even longer? Or should I go and get myself a Range Rover or maybe something else that I've not tried? But uh, I would love to hear your thoughts as always. So huge thank you to ePorsche for being wonderful to me and being fantastic going on camera, especially to Chris. He is fantastic, we all know that. Um, they are really great guys. And yeah, thanks to them for looking after this KN over the last year because I think it is due to them and to my willingness to put in the money that this car has been so incredibly fantastic to me. So thanks to them, thanks to you guys for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video very, very soon.